Good morning, St. John's. I want to today talk to you about a passage in the book of Philippians. This is a letter that Paul wrote from prison, and it's only four chapters long. In fact, we're going through this during our Bible study on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. if you'd ever want to join us. Um, but um, it's, uh, it's short and it's sweet, and a lot of our uh, liturgy in the Episcopal Church comes actually from this book, quotes that are uh, really meaningful to us that you would recognize. And um, the passage that I want to read uh, to you uh, today, I, I think, really connects with me on a deep level when I am thinking about the um, uh, just the political climate right now and, uh, and looking for how to center myself. And there's a lot of wisdom in the letter to the Philippians um, that to, to kind of read through the lens of our political climate. But if you're kind of feeling um, anxious at all, or you're, um, you're worried, or you're conflicted on the inside, um, if you have a kind of unsettled feelings about uh, where we are as a nation and, and what's going on, uh, regardless of um, what your kind of political uh, ideas are, or what side of the aisle you fall on, um, uh, there is so much beauty here in this passage. So let me just read it to us. And then I want to tell you why I find this particular passage so meaningful. This is from Philippians uh, chapter 4, and it's uh, verses 4 uh, to, to 8. And so it, it says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, I hope you can sense the peace that comes from this passage just from reading it. Clearly, Paul is talking about anxiety. He's actually writing, as I said, from prison. And so for him, this is a real thing. But he also talks about the how. How do you uh, not be anxious? And his solution is what we read in the second part of the passage where he says whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is admirable and praiseworthy, think about these things. What's interesting though is that the original Greek um, shouldn't actually be limited to just think about these things. It's actually um, uh, literally an accounting term. It's, uh, it's like saying take account numerically of these things that are good that are all around us. Um, when you look in the Hebrew scriptures, the word that relates corresponds directly to this uh, Greek word. It's the word hasab, which is the exact same word as we use in Arabic today. Even, even when you, like, you walk into a store and you say, ring me up, in Arabic what you're saying is uh, you're using this word hasab or ihsab. And um, it's, it's literally saying, you know, take a, a numeric accounting, uh, number it for me, what do I owe? And, um, and so what Paul is saying here is... Um, to take a, an account to number the things that are happening all around us that are good and beautiful, um, where there's grace and compassion and kindness, uh, things that are praiseworthy, that evoke a sense of connection um, and love. Focus on these things. Take accounting of them and focus on them. Now, what he's not saying is turn your uh, mind off to everything that's happening in the real world. He's not saying just ignore it all and just focus like you're in some dream space where nothing is awful. Uh, but no, in the midst of the awfulness, in the midst of the, the despair and the adversity, um, practice accounting for all the good that's around you. This reminds me of a story that I uh, read about um, two years ago. This happened in Vermont. It was uh, a Republican um, candidate and a, and a Democrat candidate who were both running for the Vermont House. Um, and uh, they were, um, ov obviously, they had two very opposite, polar opposite campaigns and what they were advocating for. But at the end of one um, uh, session that they had in a local library where they're doing a debate, and it was a really heated debate, they asked for a little bit of extra time at the end to do something together. 
and people had no idea what it was. Even the campaign managers didn't know anything about this. And what they did is they ended up moving the tables out of the way and this um, Democratic candidate and this Republican candidate pulled out their musical instruments. One did, uh, one had a guitar, uh, the guy had a guitar and, uh, and the female candidate had um, a, a cello and they just played a duet together. And they, the song they actually sang is a, a song that, um, that says the world needs more, kind of more, more civility, less divisiveness. And uh, the interview that I saw in the, in the news report, um, people who were there in attendance were saying how there wasn't a dry eye in the room, how they realized how, how much they were longing for just that type of civility. And, and to see um, um, how people can come together even though they, they um, feel differently about certain things. And um, I, I find that so inspiring. I mean, you can look it up. Actually, you could just uh, search the web for this. Um, just look up Lucy Rogers and Zach Mayo, Vermont, uh, video or something like that, and, and it should come up. Uh, anyway, St. John's, I hope that you find this helpful today as we continue to struggle and think about, well, how do we find peace and centering and manage our anxiety at this time, at this season, as we um, journey toward November 3. And, uh, and I hope that Paul's advice written from prison, um, knowing that, uh, you know, his life could end at any moment, uh, that this advice that worked for him uh, can work for us. Let us number the good. Let us take account of all the beautiful things, the things that are working right, the way that life is still actually right side up. Um, and use that as our lens and our perspective. God bless you, St. John's. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday as we continue in this journey of faith and life together.